All right, hey, welcome back everybody and welcome to our online students. Today what we're gonna do is take a look at drawing Lewis symbols. Lewis symbols is a, is a notation that will help us to eventually make what we call Lewis structures and three-dimensional drawings of molecules. Now to get us started here, Gilbert Lewis is another one of these, these famous dead people, but one of his contributions to science is he proposed a way of drawing atoms using pairs of electrons, using pairs of electrons and, and showing that, that, that atoms gain or lose electrons to have a Nobel gas configuration. And we might think of this as the octet rule, the octet rule. So the octet rule tells us that all main group atoms, that is atoms outside of the D block, that transition block, all main group atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons so that each atom has eight valence electrons. And there's exceptions to this, such as hydrogen. Hydrogen is that first energy level. It's a very small atom, and so it only has space for two valence electrons, only two valence electrons. Now these Lewis structures that we'll eventually draw um, take us from two-dimensional land into three-dimensional land. And you're like, whoa, three dimensions. Like we're getting really sciency now in chemistry. We're going into the third dimension. Yes, yes, it's like that. And so when we draw these Lewis symbols, the way this works is we take, take an element. And so for example here, I'm just gonna take nitrogen. So here's nitrogen like this. And I want to put dots around this atom that add up to the valence electrons. And so we take a look and we see where nitrogen is on our periodic table, it's element number 15. And as we see, it's in the second energy level. As we go left to right, we go lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen. We see that there's five valence electrons. So drawing the Lewis symbol for this, we're gonna take nitrogen, we're gonna put five dots around it. And there are some, some general rules for this. Now if we imagine this, for example, that there's like an imaginary box around nitrogen, kind of like a box that you see on the periodic table. And if we imagine that these boxes, or this box, these sides line up with some of our orbitals, such as we have an S, a P, a P, and a P orbital like this, okay? Now, we could rotate it this way or rotate it that way, it's, it, it's fine. But then we wanna put our five dots in here. And so in our, let me write the electron configuration for nitrogen. I'm gonna go nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And we have our core electrons here. And then we have our valence electrons. So I'm gonna say here I have five valence, okay, so five valence electrons. Five valence electrons. And so I wanna put five electrons around here and I see that I have two in my S orbital. So I'll go one, two like this. And then in my P orbital, I have three. And remember when we did the orbital notation for nitrogen, that that P orbital looks like this. Here's our p orbital, and in that p orbital, our electrons, according to Hund's rule, they space themselves out like this. And so when I do my Lewis symbol for this, I'm going to space out my p electrons like that for my Lewis symbol. Okay. All right, any questions on that? Okay, now we're gonna take a look at a few more um, atoms and how they come together. So we're gonna start here with sodium and chlorine. If I have sodium, Na, and I have chlorine, Cl. Sodium, we look up on our periodic table, how many valence electrons? One valence electron, okay. And it's in the S orbital, so I'm just gonna put it up here for now, okay. Chlorine. How many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven, excellent. So I'll go one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, like this. So there's my seven. And what happens with sodium chloride? Is this ionic or covalent? <laughs> Is it ionic or covalent? Thank you. It's ionic because we have a metal and a nonmetal. So I'm just going to put ionic. Okay. So here's ionic, and we're going to have electrons transferred from one thing to another. And so sodium, this electron up here, is going to move over to the chlorine, like that. And that's going to make our sodium positive and our chlorine negative, like this. And so when we draw our Lewis symbols for this, we're going to redraw this as Na plus, and then Cl minus. But we're going to put a bracket around it like this. And we're putting a bracket around it to show that everything inside of here adds up to this negative charge. And we'll put in our lone pairs here of electrons. Okay. All right. Like this. So this would be our Lewis symbol for sodium chloride. And this is for an ionic compound. Any questions on that? In these Lewis symbols, we have bonded pairs and we have lone pairs. Now, now we're going to be taking a look here at covalent bonds here. So covalent, okay, covalent bonds. So in covalent bonds, we have bonding pairs, we have single bonds, we could have uh, multiple bonds, and we're going to have these things called lone pairs. So for example, if we had, say, um, oh, let's go Br2. So I'm going to go Br2. That's bromine gas. It's going to be two bromine atoms. And so I'm going to write out my two bromine atoms, bromine and bromine. And as we look up on our periodic table, we look to see how many valence electrons, how many valence electrons does bromine have? Yes, you. Yes. Hi. Valence electrons for bromine. Say seven. Yeah, seven. Okay, seven. Because it's in group Roman numeral seven, right? Okay, so it's going to have seven valence electrons. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Okay, and then as, as we look at this, we can say, wow, it looks kind of like these two. If they were to fit together, they could share these two electrons, and then they both have eight. They both satisfy that octet rule. And that's exactly what happens. So we end up going bromine, sharing electrons like this, bromine, like that. And then we throw in our other electrons, like this, like that. OK, all right, nice, nice like that. And we have names for these electrons. We have bonded pairs like this. Bonded pairs. And then we have lone pairs. And these lone pairs are pairs of electrons that are not involved in bonding. So I'm going to call this here lone pairs. Lone pairs. And this is a lone pair. This is a lone pair. This is a lone pair. They're just. Pairs of electrons not involved in bonding. Okay. Question for you. How many dots would the Lewis symbol for gallium have? So find gallium. Gallium is GA, I believe, on our periodic table. It's element number 31, GA. That's not Georgia. That's gallium. But I look over here and it's like, okay, don't look, don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact. You might pick, you might call on me. Yeah, hey, help me out here. Help, hi, yay, glad you came today. Can you help me out? I've got gallium up here, gallium element number 31, and, and, and it's blue on this periodic table. That's a little weird, a little bit odd. The other ones are all black for some reason, right? So, so what's, what's with gallium? What? How many valence electrons? Yes, there's three. This is like Pasco collect $200. Yes, there's three of them. Uh, because 
Gallium is in what energy level? Uh, energy level. What energy level is gallium in? Four. And n is equal to four. Yep. And when n is equal to four, we've got two in the s orbital, and then we have one in the p orbital. So there should be three dots. Three, three dots. Nicely done. You're not even going to look at me. Three, three, three dots. Okay, nicely done. So gallium has three. Now, just interesting thing here. Why is it blue? Anybody know why gallium is blue on that periodic table? Yeah, because it's it's a liquid at room temperature, roughly, roughly. Yeah, mercury is as well, and so is bromine. Now, stupid story for you. Um, back in the day, there was this trick that chemistry students used to do. Now, I don't know any chemistry students who would have done this, but it was so much fun. So what we did is we went and we ordered some, some gallium. Now, we didn't have Amazon, so we had to like go to the stock room and get it. And you get gallium, and gallium melts at about 80 some degrees Fahrenheit. So it was like body temperature, but not really room temperature unless it's really hot. Okay, so what you do is, is, is you make like a little mold, like a spoon. And you heat the stuff up, and you pour it into the mold, and then you have the spoon made out of gallium. And then what you do is you go and you invite your friends from the other side of campus, like the College of Liberal Arts, where they don't take chemistry class, okay? And you invite them over and say, hey, would you like to have some tea? Right? Like, like you're trying to connect because you're a science student, and, and they're like, oh, tea, that sounds lovely. Yes, let's, let's have some tea. And you say, oh, I love tea. Very nice. And, and then you say, oh, would you like some sugar with your tea? You seem like a sweet person. And they say, oh, yes, I should very much like some, tea, some sugar with my tea. And they put in some tea. And then you, there's a little bit of sugar in there. And then you hand them the gallium spoon. And they take the gallium spoon and they stir their tea. And then they pull out this little metal stub. Because the, the spoon has melted into the tea. And they say, what is your major again? And you go, chemistry. And they're very nervous now. But you say, not to worry, not to worry, and you take their tea and you drink it. And you're fine. You're just fine. You just don't drink the gallium because it sinks to the bottom like mercury. And you know, mercury is safe, right? Yeah, this is not a good experiment. This is something we did way back in the day when we weren't worried about like chemical exposure and dying. So anyway, it's called the disappearing spoon. And um, there's, there's a book, if you're ever interested in just funny stories about chemistry, there is a book called The Disappearing Spoon, and it gives a little bit of history on each of the elements, and it's just kind of some fun read. You don't have to be a science major to, um, to enjoy that, The Disappearing Spoon. All right, so now let's try drawing the Lewis symbols for magnesium fluoride and chlorine gas. Magnesium fluoride and chlorine gas. So I'm gonna go magnesium fluoride and chlorine gas, like this, okay? So, um, oh, you know, I need help. I need help. I need help. Hey, you are so awesome. Could you help me find a volunteer? You don't know? Right here? Right here? Right where? Right, would, could you help me? Sure. Would you be my friend? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're wonderful. Okay, here, help me out. And, oh, look at you. You have a shirt that says friends on it. Hi, would you be my friend? Hi, I'm Professor Locke, and what's your name? Ella. Pardon me? Ella. Ella, thank you for joining us, Ella. Oh, you're so it's just wonderful, thank you. Okay, so Ella, I need, my, my teacher told me I need to draw the Lewis symbol for magnesium fluoride, and I'm kind of panicking a little bit here because there's lots of people looking at me. So, Ella, could you help me out here? Um, I'm gonna start out with M, G. How many dots go for magnesium? Two, two dots, okay. And I'm just gonna go, just for fun, um, I'm just gonna go like this, okay? Just for fun. I could put them here or here or here, here. doesn't matter, okay? I'm just gonna put two dots there, and then, Chlorine, I'm gonna draw chlorine, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, fluorine, fluorine, and fluorine like that. Okay, how many dots on the fluorine? Seven dots, okay. 
you didn't just make this up. You knew this. You said that like really quick because you knew. How did you know that there were seven? Because it's in the seventh group. Nicely done, Ella. Okay, thank you, Ella. And then now, is this, is this covalent or ionic? It's ionic. So this is ionic, which means we're going to have electrons going one place or the other. Um, so what's going to, which, which of these is going to lose electrons? The magnesium, yep. And if you had to guess, how many? One for each of these. Yeah, oh, oh, you're fantastic. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take these two electrons like this and like this. I'm going to go like this and like that because they came from magnesium. Okay, just, just so I can see where those came from. So now when I draw this, I'm going to go magnesium 2 plus because I lost those two electrons. And then I'm going to put my two fluorines in here. I'm going to go two fluorines like this. Okay, they have a minus charge. And each of these here have like this seven electrons of their own. And they each have one here from magnesium. Now, when you draw this like on an assignment or something, you don't have to use multiple colors. I'm just trying to be artistic and fancy here. Okay, Ella, you are amazing. Thank you. Can we, can we say hey, thank you to Ella? All right, Ella. Okay, hey, Ella, you have the power. Could you help me find somebody to, 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 to do this one here? Dustin. Hey, Dustin, thanks for being here today. Help me out here. My, my teacher told me I have to do chlorine here, and so I'm going to do chlorine, and I'm going to do chlorine like this, okay? And then Dustin, help me out. How many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. It's got seven. Wait a minute. That's just like fluorine. Are you just, like, making things up because you swear? Okay, because, oh, it's, it's like, in the same vertical column. Okay, so we're going to do seven here. So we'll go one, two, three, four five, six, seven. And then how many does chlorine have? Seven. It's still seven. Okay. It hasn't changed. Oh, this is your lucky number. This is your lucky number here, Dustin. Am I saying that right? Dustin, I apologize. No, no, I'm, I'm sensitive to that. My name, look, my name doesn't end in S-O-N, right? Like in northern Minnesota, everybody's in Erickson, Thompson, Nielsen, you know, whatever, right? And so, all right, so Destin, Destin, okay, thank you. All right, so um, now I've got my Lewis symbols for each of these. Now I want to do my Lewis structure, putting these things together here. Um, is, this, is this covalent or is it ionic? You believe it's covalent. Okay, yes, because these are two nonmetals. So we're going to put these two together, and we're going to go chlorine and chlorine, and then we'll put in our dots here, like this, like that. Okay, nicely done. Okay. Yeah, oh, yes, Destin. <laughs> nicely done. Is valence with an E there? Yeah, thank you. This blackboard is really old school and it doesn't have spell check on it. 